today uh, I will be talking about radiation endometrial cancer related to a paper that our team published earlier this year. Cell cervical cancer is the eighth most commonly diagnosed cancer and the ninth leading cause of cancer death in the world. Chemotherapy has been the standard of care uh, for these patients with locally advanced disease for almost two decades. But with longer survival rates after treatment, long-term effects of pelvic irradiation become an important issue. Radiotherapy is one of the main components of multimodality therapy for cancer management. Radiotherapy has been extensively used alone or combined with surgery or chemotherapy to treat a variety of cancers, not only cervical cancer, but also bladder, ovary, and colorectal cancer. So radiotherapy plays a crucial role in improving disease control by precisely depositing high energy uh, radiation on cancer cells, subsequently resulting in DNA damage and a, a process of cancer cells. However, radiotherapy is a double-edged sword um, because as with any cancer therapy, it has short-term and long-term side effects, which limit treatment applicability and affect patient survival. Radiation causes damage to healthy cells and tissue near the radiation area predisposing to inflammation and damage to adjacent structures, and rarely a second tumor can appear. A second primary cancer um, occurrence is regarded as a severe event among long-term cancer survivors who underwent radiotherapy. Endometrial cancer developing after irradiation of pelvic area has been called radiation endometrial cancer and represents a group of heterogeneous tumors, a late and rare complication of radiotherapy. Estimated incidence is 0.5 to 0.8%, but with significantly impaired in the survival outcomes of cancer survival. The mean latency period is between um, is, uh, 14 events, a uh, range from 5 to 28 years in reported cases. Clinical presentation is atypical, merely present with no specific symptoms of an enlarged uterus and abdominal pain or cramping leading to a delay in diagnosis. Rarely a vaginal uh, bleeding can appear. Whereas we know that maj the majority of endometrial cancers, uh, patients present with vaginal bleeding, which is a symptom that is relatively noted, noticeable. Um, cervical stenosis is a known complication after radiation therapy for cervical carcinoma and may, pre may prevent early symptoms of vaginal bleeding and the association with tumor hemorrhage could explain the development of large hematometra with delayed symptoms. It is um, crucial to educate patients to report any relevant symptoms to their clinicians, thereby facilitating early diagnosis of REC, of REC. Keeping this in mind, a fluid-filled endometrial cavity should raise the suspicion of endometrial cancer. Sonography is a simple, flexible, inexpensive, and non-invasive imaging modality that can easily recognize an enlarged uterus filled with blood and metometrics. In patients with history of cervical carcinoma treated with radiation therapy, um, with a fully, fully filled endometrial cavity, um, should be carefully evaluated to exclude an endometrial malignancy. Uh, the threshold for an endometrial biopsy should be low. 
If the biopsy is not composite or the rotation and corotage fails, a total abdominal hysterectomy may be advisable since histology of the endometrial in these cases is mandatory. Imagine staging is challenging because, because um, particular local staging due to heterogeneity, irregularity, and size of lesions associated with the additional findings of hematometra and also an atomic distortion of radiation. It is advisable to drain hematometra previous to the exam. The accurate local press surgical staging can be challenging, but we know that distant metastases are not uncommon at presentation and are readily detected by uh, CT or MR imaging. Distant metastatic disease is frequently observed at presentation, affecting various locations such as long sleeve, uh, peritoneal, uh, vulva, pelvic wall, and inguinal lymph nodes. MR imaging does not show major advantage over CT in the evaluation of these cases of advanced disease because local regional uh, staging is not relevant for the treatment of most of these patients. Although the difference in survival between radiation endometrial cancer and sporadic endometrial cancer patients appear to be secondary to tumor factors, such as to the large percentage of high stage and high grade cancers, other factors may also be involved, such as host and also treatment factors. Studies have shown that, that patients who, do, who develop radiation endometrial cancer are more likely to have aggressive histological subtypes, higher stages, and higher grades than patients with uh, sporadic types. This indicates that pelvibrada therapy might be regarded as a carcinogenic factor in the development of poorly differentiated uh, cancers. Sporadic uh, endometrial cancers differ in that ma the majority are of endometrioid uh, histology and are diagnosed at an early stage and have full rates approaching uh, 90%. Papillary serous and clear cell carcinomas compromise only 10 to 15% of sporadic endometrial cancers and only 25% of sporadic endometrial carcinomas have spread beyond the uterus at the time of the diagnosis. Host factors may also contribute to decreased survival in women with metastatic uterine malignancy. After pelvic irradiation with or without chemotherapy, bone marrow function may be reduced resulting in possible reverse cancer immunity. Radiotherapy is generally known, however, to induce enhanced short-term immune function via various mechanisms, such as increased immunogenic cell death, but the long-term effects are not known. Thus, addressing the long-term effects of radiotherapy on cancer immunity may be of interest in the era of oncoimmunotherapy. Regarding uh, treatment factors, um, ra radiotherapy was less likely to be utilized to women with metachnous tumors compared to those without metachnous tumors. Studies uh, showed that women with metachnous uterine malignancy were less likely to undergo surgical staging with lymphadenectomy compared to those without uh, metachnous tumors. Therefore, suboptimal treatment in women with metachnosuterine malignancy could be a causal factor for decreased survival in this disease. This being, this is uh, particularly important um, in women with early stage disease. Women with metachnosuterine malignancy may also likely previously receive multiple treatments. Um, 
so are less likely to receive um, again uh, radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy. Also, radiotherapy related effects on pelvic tissues may also limit the extent of surgery for metaclonus uterine malignancy. Now uh, we present a clinical case from our hospital that was a patient who that was diagnosed with um, an invasive endocervical adenocarcinoma, stage 1b2, uh, FIGO, and submitted to local treatment with uh, radiotherapy with a complete response. During follow-up, she was diagnosed with various side effects of, um, related to the radiotherapy. One year after treatment, she developed cystitis and pulsitis. And in the eighth year of follow-up, she developed back pain due to uh, radiation-induced vertebral necrosis. And in 2019, she presented in our uh, urgency department a stenic complaining of pelvic pain with a macroscopic hematuria. With the support of urology team, bladder irrigation system was placed for clot removal. A CT scan re revealed volumous hematometria. We decided to perform an aspirative biopsy, which was negative for malignant cells. Also, a PET scan was done with no evidence of recurrence or other malignancy. Uh, because of hemodynamic instability and the enlargement of hematometra with the need of blood transfusions, um, we did a bladder irrigation si system, electrocautery, hyperbaric oxygen treatment, but nothing worked. So um, it was decided to perform an hysterectomy, and histology revealed a serous uterine carcinoma invading less than half of the neometric, staging 1A. And pathological review with biomolecular analysis rule out a uh, recurrence of the cervical uh, adenocarcinoma. So she was performed, um, proposed to adjuvant chemotherapy. After four months, due to severe bladder tenesmus, a cystectomy was done during the, the surgery. Uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis was diagnosed with a cystic fluid, uh, multiple implants to Douglas, uh, bladder and several in small bowel and peritoneal. Cystectomy, bilateral ureterostomy, peritoneal bi biopsies were performed and histology confirmed implants with serous uterine carcinoma. She was addressed to palliative chemotherapy and uh, care. So, concluding, as illustrated by our case report, Radiation endometrial cancer is an aggressive malignancy with poor prognosis. But long term survival to detect metaclonal uterine malignancy may not be feasible because of rarity, late onset, and lack of useful clinical and pathological parameters. Nevertheless, both clinics Clinicians and patients need to be aware of these rare but highly aggressive secondary primary malignants and prompt or cup may be warranted when suspected. There are some predictors reported in the literature that can be of use. Hematometra after radiotherapy is a red flag for um, cervical cancer um, and may be a sign of metaclonus uterine malignancy. Cervical stenosis is associated with delay in diagnosis. So the question that we can make is if we should do adjuvant hysterectomy after radiotherapy for locally advanced cervical cancer 
to prevent the future risk of um, metaclonal uterine malignancy. The guidelines do not support this opinion, but we can think about it and uh, see the patient that we have and uh, decide with the patient. This, uh, this is our paper that we published earlier, earlier this year. And take care. Thank you so much for your presentation, Dr. Sara.